Welcome to the Event Life Podcast, where we dive into the live event scene and have conversations with the people who make them happen. I'm your host, Esteban Quadros, and I'm joined by the ever-insightful co-host, Jessica Barrett, and we're excited to share the conversation with you. Enjoy. So today we're joined with Megan Gustafson, um, and you have an uh, impressive resume just kind of looking at it and talking to you before the show. Um, you ran the Basilica Block Party um, from 2007 to 2018, which is crazy. It's a very long time long to run tenure. such a big event. Yeah. Um, and currently you're the director of events um, and programs for the Minneapolis Downtown Council, which is, I believe, responsible for the Holodazzle and then the Aquatennial as well. Um, and my first question is just like, how did you even get into doing such large scale stuff? Yeah, I have a weird resume for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, okay, so I worked for nonprofit organizations for a really long time before any of that. And um, when you work in a nonprofit organization, you wear a lot of different hats because budgets are tight and, you know, you just kind of dabble in a little they bit of everything. Volunteer you for everything. Yeah, exactly. You're voluntold. Voluntold. <laughs> yeah. Voluntold. Yeah. Committees are a thing, you know. So um, basically, I was working at a nonprofit, and I was recruited um, by Basilica out of this other nonprofit that I was working in. I had done some fundraising events um, at a hotel that used to be the Graves Hotel, Ooh, which I yeah. loved the Graves Hotel. Yeah. Um, but I did a couple of fundraisers there with my previous organization, and the person I worked with spoke highly of me to Silica, who was trying to do um, their fundraiser there um, after. So um, I remember the person, I remember it, we both remember it differently. My boss at Basilica remembers saying, are you interested in an events position? I remember it as, do you know anybody who's interested in an events <laughs> position? So at that time, um, the job description was like Basilica block party, golf tournament. I mean, it was like a lot of events that I had never done before. So it was a pretty exciting opportunity for me. And um, I did it. And you don't know how to do a music festival until you do a music festival, for sure. And so, time-wise, is this like 2007-ish when yep. you're starting to get into that? Yep, yep. I had done fundraising events before that. Yep. I had done like board meetings, things like that for a nonprofit. But this was really my foray, foray into really outdoor, large-scale, public-facing events. Um, and so Basilica was sort of the first thing for me that I did. Um, and how in that long, oh area. so sorry um how long was basilica block party going on before you joined i think it was like 10 12 12 years probably okay so it had some established history but yeah. that's still i mean that definitely feels like the kind of thing that it's not like you can take a class or a train to do you just <laughs> learn it on the fly and there's a lot of things that you probably have seen <laughs> yeah yeah it is definitely um, something you just learn by doing for sure. And I don't think anybody could teach that class uh, and you'd come out ready to ready to roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you remember your first like year doing it? Like what that experience was like just getting thrown into it? Yeah, I thought, what the hell did I get myself into? I mean, <laughs> just the pressure and stress and like the amount of decision making ability that I had to not know a lot was like pretty overwhelming. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about spending $150,000 on a band and it's really up to you to decide that. I mm. mean, you work with a talent buyer, um, but I really drove a lot of that lineup by research and going to shows and all of that stuff. And I was just given the opportunity to really make some of those decisions and see, you know, who knows how it'll go. <laughs> yeah. So how did that work on the church side? So the church runs it. Mm -hmm. So it's a church ran fundraiser. Yep. And the fundraiser, if I'm not mistaken, was to help restore the Basilica. Yeah. So um, there's uh, so there's the Basilica side of things, which is really the church side of things. And then there was a nonprofit that um, was called the Basilica Landmark. Mm. Basilica Landmark is a nonprofit that's responsible for restoring um, the Basilica. When I started was around 100 years old. Mm. Um, and so when they built the Basilica, they built it with a flat roof. 
And in Minnesota, that's just a terrible idea. <laughs> Yeah. Seems yeah, not sure ideal. <laughs> speak to that. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. So they've been drying out the um, the stone for a very long time, and it needs tuck pointing. And I mean, it's a massive. I mean, it's a huge asset to the city. It greets mm-hmm. everybody when they enter, right? And yeah. um, so that um, event raised money for the Basilica Landmark. Mm-hmm which was the restoration organization, as well as St. Vincent de Paul, which is the outreach ministries there at Basilica um, that help people with um, IDs and other services that they need to get themselves back on their feet. So that's the purpose when I was there, and that I believe is still the purpose today of that of that event. So Nice. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because as someone who knows about it, I have never – thought of it as a fundraiser it never really occurred to me but it's like of course it is like it makes so much more sense and it was obvious but I guess I just associate it only as a big old party well it made sense to me so I grew up in a small town west of here like an hour called Winstead Mm -hmm. and Winstead is kind of semi-famous for like a country music festival that they put you're familiar familiar with with it it's called Winstock Uh, I have not but I believe I know somebody who helps with the talent buying Kyle I know over there or he used to, maybe. I used to volunteer for it. So okay. it's funny because I was part of the church, uh, mm-hmm. at Holy Trinity Church in Winstead. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all my homies back home. <laughs> um, no, but for real. So that's, honestly, it's partially responsible for like me getting into music. It's like being around the talent and getting, like, I do freelancing AV stuff a little bit now. And it's like, part of that is from like my childhood experiences, like being a volunteer. Um, but it's interesting Cause like you said, you don't know, like, yeah, like, where's that money going or like, why do they need that money? And it just kind of disassociates from the festival portion of it in a way that there's probably other people that pay closer attention and realize it's a fundraiser. It's just that to me, it just is a music festival and that's it. But yeah, obviously there's money and it goes somewhere. So, well, we always, well, two things. Um, we always said it, it, it was not only about the money, but equally it was about, Um, attracting people to the Basilica as well. So we had, when I was there, there was a committee of like 70 people. There were 1,500 volunteers at that event. And so um, really raising awareness for the Basilica, drawing people into it. Um, And and so it really had both of those goals. Because if Mm -hmm. you think you're going to make a million dollars off of a music festival, you're wrong. No. Mm -hmm. Um, Even Live Nation relies on quantity and not just one festival, right? And so... Um, so it had to be both of those things when I was there, really bringing people in, raising that volunteerism, as well as um, obviously not bankrupting. Yeah, <laughs> the also parish. important. <laughs> <laughs> Which was also important. But but those things were. And when it first started, it was one of the only music festivals in town. You know, it was Fair. it was like super different than anything else. And there's some old ads that are just so funny. Yeah, it, you know, we we're always really fortunate that we got to partner with. Um, some of the large ad agencies in town and they loved the project and then they would love to like you know sprinkle in a little of that church humor yeah a little dry humor (laughs) we walked and uh had some interesting emails back and forth with the uh priest at the time saying so what do you think about these lyrics i mean (laughs) i was gonna i wanted to ask you about that how much did the church drive the selection of the bands because obviously as we know like certain bands constitute like a certain type of people that come mm-hmm. out to watch them yeah um i know cake did it i want to say like 2017 or mm-hmm. maybe around then and i mean a lot of them are known to be like potheads and stoners and and stuff like that so like th- the association of the church with that type of people mm-hmm. not that it's anything wrong with it or anything like that it's but you know a, what i mean it's though an interesting it's dichotomy, an interesting right? it's an interesting yeah. dichotomy yeah right. the, the the connection of like it's it's an interesting way for a church to make money Mm -hmm. yeah and i i guess um you know it's a it's a church that's in an in an you know downtown urban area and and we always used to say oh you're basilica catholic which was different than regular catholic you know (laughs) yeah so um so yeah it 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 was always a really fine line we booked the bands like i really tried to focus on bringing in kind of a little bit of an older demographic that had expendable income 
yep. um, versus, you know, the up and coming bands that are going to draw people in and they're a they're going to come drunk to your festival and then you're, they're your problem. Right. You and know, not spend any money and getting not spend drunk. any money there. Right. Um, VIP tickets was a huge draw and they, you know, were not cheap. So that was something that needed to be successful as well. Sure. Um, and then we worked at the radio station as well. We worked at the talent buyer. I used to work with Sue McLean, RIP. Like yeah. that was an amazing mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, we all kind of weighed in and I did the research and I would say, okay, let's go for it. Or, you know, and then we also worked with other festivals in the area to try to create routing for the agents and stuff versus just um you know Having picking something out of the air it's a lot easier to route a band when you have winnipeg folk festival yep. um us and then we used to work sometimes with 8035 which was a festival in iowa yep. and so we could create some routing for those agents um by doing that and that was probably in my last few years we started getting yep. smarter and doing that mm -hmm. but but we did walk a very, you know, a gray line. There were certain topics that were just totally off limit, you know, and we kind of knew what those were in advance. And what um, are those topics? <laughs> well, the, any was... of the sacraments, any of the sacraments. So that was. I was raised know. Catholic and I'm like, wait, what? Yes. <laughs> so are we talking like censorship on some level? I don't think censorship. I think it was more just like selective. Selective. We had to just be more selective. Like of the bands, or yeah, okay. There's no. There way. wasn't like telling people like, oh, hey, don't say. That, it would have made that ten times worse. Cool. Honestly, like you can't tell an artist oh, what they, they can and can't do. It would have been made it worse. And yeah. some of them will do it anyways. Right. Father John Misty. <laughs> that was a gift that before Sue McLean passed, she we had a band back out, and so we hired Father John Misty. And I had I actually had to leave. I was in the skybox and I was like, I can't watch because then I can um because then I can plead. Oh, you've got plausible deniability. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, what? <laughs> oh no. Okay. Now that I'm not there, I can say that out yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but there was a lot of that. I mean, there was a band one time, um, Michael Fronte. Um yep. he got, you know, he got a lot of blowback from his fan base. We're playing the event and we actually like we were summoned to the bus and we sat down with him and gave him a tour and talked him through like all the good that the event does mm -hmm. and what was the blowback just playing a catholic church event yeah. you know being mm -hmm. an artist organized who, religion sort of yeah yeah i don't know the I can't remember the full specifics of it, but, um, you know, we turned it around and, and he understood like the funding just isn't there anymore mm -hmm. for, for the church. And so he, he, you know, he kind of understood that and we leaned into what the money actually went to, which was the restoration and then the outreach piece. So yeah, there's, I mean, many sleepless nights over <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> specific lyrics, that, but what did father, what was the lyric? What was the father John Missy lyric? Well, he, I mean, he, he did, I mean, he had a lot of, okay. a lot of them. Okay. And it was a lot. So you left for his whole set. You were like, I'm out yep. for this whole thing. Got yep. it. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But I'm gonna have to like go back great. in time. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll have to check out like the album yeah, that he was should. promoting or something. Yeah, that's awesome. What was like? <laughs> sorry, so somewhat change of topic, but yeah. like, out of all the bands, um, do we know like what the most expensive, like bring in was like yeah we had a oh, we had a <laughs> we had a challenging year we brought in um uh matchbox 20 and the goo goo dolls and it was a package deal mm. oh interesting and um they you know we booked them everything was fine um and then all of a sudden you know we found out when they were doing all the advancing that they wanted us to tear down all of our production because they were touring with a production mm. and they wanted us to use and this was saturday so it wasn't even like friday it's like you, oh. you know so they wanted us to tear everything down put all their stuff up and i mean the stage didn't even fit this because they were touring in you know large venues this is when they were still pretty you know 90s. pretty popular like, like, yeah no, just kidding. Just kidding. No. <laughs> it was no i know i'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but um so that was um that was one of the biggest packages i think that we ever that we ever spent on so you made it happen we did we made it happen it was challenging but it happened they played it was great and yeah 
And see. there's multiple stages, right? So like the changeover isn't uh -huh. like people are waiting around for that stage. They, they go to a different stage, watch that band. Well, we and changed then... over the whole day. So before it even before the show started on the second day, it was changed over. So it didn't have to happen during the festival. It's gotcha. just all the stuff was up there, and all the other bands were like squished to the front of the stage. But they backlined it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So there's three stages. So there's the church stage we called it. There's the main stage, and then there was a kind of a local stage. Um, yeah there as well so yeah what how how do you feel about the well so it's coming back this year is this the first time it's been back since covid or is it, no, it did, they tried it in 2022 20? or something yeah and i wasn't involved in that one right. um and i'm not really involved this year but it is coming back this year yeah. and it's in august and which, it has a new location yep it's at boom island which is in downtown minneapolis oh so you still kind of have some yeah we're excited about it we you know we are wanting it to be really successful because it's good for downtown and obviously i have a long history there and right. it's pretty special to me so um so yeah it's coming back august i think second and third okay. and it's gonna be at boom island and they have not released the lineup yet so interesting yeah how do you feel about that location change well, they had some construction on their um, the main stage uh, parking lot, and so okay. they did not have a choice but to move it. Got it. So it's moving to Boom Island. Boom Island has an amazing view of downtown. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been to Boom Island, but it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's I right think off the it's, river, kind of. Right? Yeah, I think it's underutilized personally, but it's really cool. Because doesn't it run into some issues with flooding and stuff during certain parts of the year, or is that? I think that's Harriet, Harriet Island, Island. in okay. St. Paul. Yeah, yes. they've had okay. some they real challenges a big like flooding or anything this year it's well, been a true. very oh, yeah. huge like of snow <laughs> true. there's not a lot of yeah, there's snow not melt. a lot of water <laughs> anywhere yeah Which we had the true. winter drought for sure so we'll be able to yeah. walk across to it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah probably yeah so where you go we don't need roads yeah. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool there's a there's actually a really cool thing that i tell people is kind of a hidden gem in minneapolis and it's the minneapolis water taxi I don't know if you've any of you have been on it, no. but it is the Minneapolis water taxi and it's it seats, I think, six to eight people and you can go on on it for an hour and you can choose whether to go to the Lowry Bridge or to go towards downtown to like Waterworks and where Omni is and you can bring your own food and beverage on there and they Fun. give you on this little electric boat tour on the river and it's like super cool. The views are amazing and it come and it leaves from Boom Island. Oh, fun yeah oh. i've never heard of that it's huh. really cool i highly suggest it where does uh where does it start because uwamni is like that's where the dam and all yeah. those all that locks are well it comes from boom island it's and then it goes towards uwamni and it gets to just before the lock and dam and it turns around oh uh, okay gotcha. yeah so you don't i mean we did go towards the falls and i was like oh but <laughs> there it's a little electric boat and they yeah they're really good about it so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's dangerous, but I mean, disclaimer on that, I guess. I went kayaking one time on the river, so it can't be that dangerous. Yeah, because I feel like kayaks from Boom Island, you can yeah, you can get the paddle share. That. We yeah. did it actually as an aria outing once, um, way back in like twenty. Kayaking? Mm hmm. Yeah, That's like funny. Yeah, it was it was like probably twenty, maybe spring twenty thirteen. Yeah, it was a while back. You know so. the river? Mm hmm. That sounds sketch. Yep, it it felt like it a little bit, but it was fun. <laughs> it was super fun, but it was cool too because you go underneath like these bridges and there'd be tons and tons of graffiti under. Yeah, and it's like, really when cool do you graffiti. Ever get to see this kind oh, of perspective, yeah. different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. That's really fun. There's yeah. a lot of great graffiti down there. There is. Yeah, I know. I really liked it. It was fun. I actually enjoyed it a lot. So, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so like fast forwarding, so you yep. come from the the uh, uh, the block party, and now you're doing like the Aquitanio and the Holodazzle. So yeah. like, what is, what was the transition like from, is it kind of like the same thing, but just like different name or is it like, I would say that my transition, you know, I thought, oh, you know, I've done this big outdoor music festival. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in for a real surprise <laughs> when I transitioned. Cause I mean, the job that, um, I have now, I mean, we are, we do a ton and they're large scale yeah. complicated events and so i've learned so much mm -hmm. in my current role um and i i thought i knew a lot and i really didn't know much at all <laughs> so um currently my job is um we do a lot of different events throughout the year so um holodazzle and aquatennial are largest public facing events that we do okay. free 
Um, we try to keep everything that we do free and inclusive and accessible to, to anyone. Our real goal of the organization I work for now is to create an extraordinary downtown where people want to live, work, and play. That's kind of our tagline. Mm -hmm. um, and by doing that, we try to create vibrancy through um, the events that we do. Um, so I work on the Minneapolis Downtown Council side of the organization. We also have another side of the organization that has, we have the same CEO, the same board of directors, um, and we have like same staff meetings and things, but we work, um, the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District is also a part of our organization. So they really focus on clean, green, and safe. Um, but we work together on a lot of things as nice. well. So um, I do like uh, monthly programs for our members because um, we're a nonprofit business association. Yep. And then um, I do a couple of fundraisers throughout the year. So one is our annual meeting that happens every February at the Armory where we sort of recap um, the previous year. Um, and that's about 1,000 people at the Armory. It's really high production, high entertainment, um, really heavy content with a lot of data that we collect from people. Um, so that's a really fun event that we just wrapped. Um, and then we do a fun program, which is one of my favorite pro events that we do is called Pianos on Parade, where we take 24 artist painted pianos and we put them around downtown Minneapolis and we program them every Thursday over the noon hour for the month of June. So mm -hmm. we partner with a lot of different arts organizations, um, on that program and it's super fun. And then yeah. we have a theme every year for the pianos. And you say the it's like play, like player pianos or people are sitting at pianos and they're getting like on a trailer or no, how does that we, work exactly? Uh, like Michelle Branch style. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Actually, no, yeah, I, I, like it. I like it. Maybe have one behind on the buses going down Nicola. Yes, yeah. following bus. Well, because like <laughs> downtown once in a while back in the day, I don't I'm not that far back in the day, but like there were. I went to McNally Smith for oh, music yeah. performance, yep. and I know on the corner they had a play, or like a piano you could, and it was a painted piano. That was one of our pianos. Okay, that's yeah. what I was. That's yeah, yeah. exactly what I was wondering. Yeah. So were they? How 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 do they like do the parade of those? Well, there's no parade. It's just like you can go to all 24. There's 24. Okay, of so them. they're you just strategically parade. located. You parade yourself around. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I'm picturing we like have a downtown parade full of well, pianos. Well, we've we have some ide big ideas on pianos, but we haven't we haven't implemented any of them yet. But just get one of those really big giant big style ones that people can play. That'd be obnoxious. Actually, don't do that. People yeah. would be really annoying on that. I bet. <laughs> Yeah, so they're, I mean, they're open for people to play. They're really for impromptu um, concerts and things like that. And we've found that, you know, there's been people who travel and they play all the pianos. They like, they travel to do oh, it. Cool. Oh, cool. Um, we've also found it, it, when it first started, it was also part of kind of a safety tactic because, you know, we found out that there were some people who, you know, had been causing some issues around downtown. And when we put the piano in some troubled locations, it changed the whole vibe that corner mm. and found out that some that there's one person in particular found out that that person was actually a wonderful um piano player and oh. so that changed what they did during the day instead of going around and finding things to do and get into and whatever um they sat down on a piano instead and that was amazing so like you're saying a troublemaker of a human was <laughs> causing trouble a piano was put there and then they just started playing piano and like it, it, if you give people earth. something to that's do, that's amazing, right? That's yeah. really cool. A lot of trouble is caused just because people are bored, or they yeah. don't have I, another I gotta, outlet, or they don't, yeah. you know, they need a way to express themselves. And no, I got to speak to that too, because yeah. like I went to for, to school for music, guitar yeah. performance specifically, um, and I remember when I was like seventeen, eighteen, I was definitely getting into some stupid stuff. Yeah, you know, and honestly, I attribute music to helping me like find that stability um learn to, to to work towards something you know you become passionate you um have to be dedicated to like get any good at it mm -hmm. so it actually taught me so many lessons in life um so th that's no surprise but it's just like amazing to yeah. like see it happen like on a street corner somewhere yeah, it's an amazing program. It's one of my favorite ones that we do because not only do we find local artists, but like we partner with the Fair High School in downtown, which is an arts mm, high school. Mm. And, and those kids, they paint them. They get paid to paint them. Um, we also have um, some, um, uh, we worked with Juxtaposition, Juxtaposition yeah. Arts on one one time. We worked on um, the last couple of years, a Culture Club Collaborative has painted one as a part of their um 
uh, arts programming for youth experiencing homelessness. And so that's a program out of Youth Link in downtown mm-hmm. Minneapolis, which is for um, youth who are, are uh, experiencing homelessness. So they come together and they paint this piano and, you know, they have a great community building experience around that. So awesome. that's sort of the greater good that we try to do with the pianos program is to bring in some yeah. of these groups so that it enriches their programming puts these great pianos out in downtown, and then we pay those performers once a week awesome. during the month of June to play over the noon hour. And you're making music accessible. Absolutely. That's really cool. Yeah. I love that. That's like, and it's funny because I, I know the piano, like I still remember yeah. it at McNally. I think it was right on the corner. Yep. It was that, like that weird little dinosaur over there too. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, um, it's like where the history theater is now if people... Um, right across from the Scientology building. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. That's a fun corner. Yep. Oh, cool. Yep. That was the old uh, stomping ground. But, yeah. yep. Oh man, that's funny. This episode is sponsored by IMAV, an innovative and leading audiovisual company based in the Twin Cities. If you're looking to elevate your next event, all you have to do is reach out to the team at IMAV. They'll put together a package that not only fits your budget but takes your event to the next level. IMAV strives to not only be a resource, but an asset to the success of your event. Whether you need video, audio, or lighting, the professionals at IMAV can execute and run your meeting or event flawlessly. Their team is a dream to work with and always deliver a final product that leaves guests blown away. Find them online at imav.pro. Use promo code EVENTLIFE when you contact them to receive 30% off all equipment rentals for your first event. Again, go to imav.pro to lock in the best audio visual vendor for your next event. Yeah, so that one is one of the programs that I love that we're working towards right now that kicks off in June. And then um, we have the obviously the Minneapolis Aquatennial is the official civic celebration for the city of Minneapolis. So that kicks off with a parade um, on the Wednesday, um, July 24th. And then it uh, concludes with the Target Fireworks on the river, which um, will be back on the Third Avenue Bridge this year. Oh, fun. How long yeah. has it it's been moved for a while? Um, the Third Avenue Bridge was under construction for, yeah. I think it was three years. It was like yeah. a long, long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, and actually the fireworks are much better when they're shot off Third Avenue mm-hmm. than Stone Arch, because that's where we were shooting them, was the Stone Arch Bridge. And it's got this curve to it. And right. so the fireworks guy just was like, oh, can't wait to get back to the Third Avenue yeah. Bridge. So we're excited about that. It's actually one of the top five fireworks um, shows in the country and it's called a pyro musical because it's actually curated to a musical playlist oh, that's so amazing yeah like it's pretty cool the rhythm of it or yeah each each song and um fireworks display are coordinated together so um they do certain colors based on the music the the whole rhythm of the fireworks um are programmed to music so wow it's pretty cool that's yeah cool. i like that do you know what the other Top four? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> swear on them? Oh, you can swear. Oh, yeah, 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 this yeah. is like a very <laughs> relaxed uh, Right, yeah. Thing, so. Just don't lean back too far. That's the only thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Got that. Got that. I'll try not to. Yeah. Um, this is kind of funny, but so when I, I'm from like small, small town, Minnesota, and I went to college in Iowa at Luther College, also for music originally. But I came up here once, I was dating somebody who lived up here, and we went to the Aquitennial Fireworks, and I had not spent any significant time in the cities. Like, I think we would come up here, I don't know, maybe every other year, like maybe to pick somebody up from the airport, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. And um, we, I just remember we went down there, I didn't know how we got there, I didn't know where we were, I was very, <laughs> like the context of it was completely missing. and. I was like, it's so charming down here and it's so pretty and everything's so scenic and it's like on the river and that whole like riverside area. And and then I, I like when I moved back to the cities, I was like, where is that? Like I didn't know for a while, like it took me a while to find it again. And then I ended up working at the machine shop and I was like, it feels really good to be here, like so close to this place that like really made me feel um, at home in the Twin Cities like way back when, so. It's beautiful down by the river. If people haven't been down there, there's the new Waterworks Park down there where Owamni, um, the the restaurant, uh, the sous chef restaurant is Mm -hmm. down there. And it is, I mean, it's just a beautiful place to hang out, honestly. I really miss, so at the Guthrie, they used to have Sea Change, that restaurant there. And there's a patio on the backside of the Mm -hmm. Guthrie that faces the river. 
Oh my gosh, I love that. Like that patio is amazing, and yeah. sea change is gone now, but the patio is still there, and it's it's a lovely place uh, to visit. But I I love I love it down at the river. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, one of the most special places in Minneapolis for sure. Well, and especially with like the addition of Awamni down there, it's just kind of amazing. I didn't know that park was finished. I'll have to go down there and check it out. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, they do a lot of programming down there during the day, like games and music and cool. and things like that. The park board. Um, oh runs that so it's pretty cool down there and then also the lock and dam is down there and you can take free you can go out on the lock and dam any day of the week when the visitor center is open That's and cool. check it out which is a it's free to do it. You just go out there. I think it's kind of a hidden gem as well. Yeah, so that's super interesting. I did not know that was the thing you could do. Um, We're here to talk about events, but I'm giving I know, you hidden I feel gems like now. I'm learning so much about Minneapolis. <laughs> this today. is a tourist channel today. Yeah, yeah sorry, <laughs> travel, the plugging. <laughs> I'm really not trying to do that. I really am passionate about it, but no, um, but, but I, I mean, spent a lot job. of time down there because of Aquatennial yeah. and the site inspection and you know all of that. So, um, so Aquatennial happens in July. And then um, in the fall, we do a, um, a fundraiser that's just like a networking fundraiser, really short program. People just want to network. Um, we did that at the Mosaic venue, um, and we're going to do it again there um, yeah. this fall. And then, of course, Holodazzle, which didn't happen last year, um, but we are, um, you know, sort of working on reimagining what Holodazzle looks like for 2024. Nice. So It's transitioned over the years a few different ways, and I feel like it's cool to see how it like reimagines itself and reiterates in different times. So I'm excited to see it come back. Yeah. It'll be cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, and then I forgot, like last year we started a huge initiative, um, which was called downtown Thursdays. Mm. Downtown Thursdays are where I shut down. Uh, we shut down Nicollet mall from Washington all the way to 10th street, which is, if you know, downtown in so Nicollet, it's right it by is? target. Oh, okay. Yep. Target is 10th, uh, 9th the, to 10th. Kind of by the Dakota area. Yeah, just before that. Yep. Um, and we shut down Nicollet um, every day from 11.30 to 1.30. Not every day, every Thursday. Okay. <laughs> from 11.30 to 1.30. And we did lots of different free activation and programming. So we did concerts. We did drag shows. We did, um, we had the art cars pop up. We had donut giveaways. We had dance battles. We had canvas clashes. We had like lots of different free, we had roller skating and that was free. And it was really a way to try to incentivize workers to come down another day during the week. And what was great about Thursday, it also kind of crossed over with some of the entertainment and the um, people coming for the weekend for games and concerts and yeah. theater and all of that stuff too. So that was a really fun initiative last year because I got to just come up with the whole, <laughs> what does I was it gonna look ask, like? Who, what who's coming up with all these like initiatives like that? Yeah, that would be, I mean, we hear from some of our, our businesses in downtown, mm. um, you know, about kind of what their needs are. And then we try to kind of match those needs as much as we can. I mean, we can't, Yeah, we can't do everything everybody wants us <laughs> to do. We are a pretty right. small team. Right. Um, but that was one of the big initiatives that, um, you know, some of the businesses down there felt really strongly about um, trying to get some of those workers to come back to the office. Nice. One of the things that uh we that i mean i skipped over uh these are open air events so like you're dealing with the elements um do you have any like crazy stories about like a big storm sweeping through and like because like you're also dealing with i I don't know exact numbers but thousands of people so you always have that like mob mentality yeah too that you need to be mindful of and like security and proper exits and all yeah. that kind of stuff so like didn't you I, guys deal with like a pop-up thunderstorm last year at the aquatennial because i remember yep. doing a show and i was caught in that too yep we had just before the parade was supposed to start um last year um we had um some weather rolling in like right at the start which was like 7 30 oh, p.m gosh. And so you have to have all of your, I mean, we have almost 100 units in the parade, so they have to be lined up yeah. well in advance of when you start the parade, right? I mean, they just start checking in at 2 in the afternoon. Yeah. And we stage at the convention center, which was very fortunate for us. And I actually have an amazing director of operations who does Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, F1 races. Like, that's what he does kind of as a side hustle. Um, but he's a full-time director That's of operations. That's his yeah, side hustle. I mean, <laughs> he, he's, he's pretty incredible um, at that stuff. And so um, he really does, deals a lot with our risk management stuff. Mm. Um, but they were smart enough. They got, and, and we also work um, pretty closely. There's um, 
so I, you guys know Mike Augustin, next a weather guy on WCCO. Um, but he also has a service where you can have Mike on call um, for oh. your events as well. And it's, I know everybody thinks the apps are the super accurate thing, but having an actual weather person give you the likelihood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, we'll talk about Minnesota festivals and events later, but he's going to do a session there on climate oh, cool. climate change and events. Um, well, not cool, but... Yeah, yeah. but I mean, we need to know, right? Good because topic, yeah. There are events that have actually booked their dates based on like the best meteorological weather historically right like, yeah like never rains on yeah and that's they, like what the farmers was almanac, built on almanac that. And, oh like, really aquatennial was was um scheduled on that date because of that wow. um basilica also had um used some of that that's methodology a, as well th- that's like playing the odds like eventually I mean, you're yeah. due to yeah. get smacked. <laughs> Holy crap. That's interesting, though. That's yeah. a, th- like you don't really think of that. Um, well, and uh, the ways in which like climate change is altering those patterns would be very terrifying yeah. and interesting to talk yeah. about. Yeah. But, wow. The Basilica one time we had to clear the grounds, too, and it, um, a pretty significant weather event came through. But we had a I mean, we had a plan in place. Is it like a siren goes off and people start scattering or well, like <laughs> Is it total chaos, or is yeah, there like a someone no. gets on the mic and does the voice of God real quick? Yeah, we we try to Literally. get on the mic. <laughs> we try to have out like we had a big committee, so you know you would get your volunteers and your money and whatever to one location, and then um, we gave the guests as much as we could, you know, the safe locations. But you know, oh, they're yeah. drinking; they don't. Yeah, they just do whatever they want. Like, I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> Or they're yeah. like, I'm going to go sit under that big oak tree and yeah. then they get elect- <laughs> like, they get, yeah, lightning strikes the tree and then yeah. everyone dies. We were really fortunate at Basilica though, because like we would let people in the church oh, and wow. then they would get in sanctuary. with like their, yeah, and they would get in there and they would bring in a beer or whatever. And <laughs> I would see the you um, just priest turn. would be like, don't worry, I took the sacraments out of the thing and Can, can I get this away. beer blessed, Father? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> and there were also parking ramps too there, so right. people would go into the parking ramps. But then, you know, how do you, what do you do after is is the other part. Like, do the headliners, you know, how do you, do you refund the headliners? Do they go on? Do they go back on, right. You know, a yeah. prey shows up looking at their tents and... <laughs> <laughs> and waiting to load out, yeah. like, come on. So it's like a automatic. So it, right, is like if a band's, they're scheduled... If weather comes through, they don't even touch the stage. They're still getting paid, or how does that work? Or is there a clause that's like you can you can run bands in the rain? Lightning is the problem, right? Yeah. Um, lightning is the real challenge, um, and there was lightning, and so we couldn't. Do you remember but they what did. Band? The headliners did go on, mm. and so okay. we didn't have to refund anyone because the headliners went on. It was just delayed. Awesome. Ziggy Marley was one of the headliners. Nice. On um, the church stage and went on, did the full set. That's so, cool. yeah, I mean, nobody got hurt and everybody is safe. But having that, I mean, having a plan, you got to have a risk management plan. I think a lot yeah. of people don't, and it's just only a matter of time. <laughs> and, and a lot of the people are volunteers. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you're hiring out security, though. There's a budget for that. Yep. Um, so what are the volunteers like like check in at through the gate and, or like what are, yep. how do you kind of like first of all find that many volunteers but yeah. like yeah decide where they go well basilica just had a loyal group and also like if you volunteered one night you could come the next night okay. for free so right so incent- incentivizing yep. them um but they would have lots of different roles so the committee like they had pretty significant roles so like there was a committee member who was a volunteer who was in charge of food and beverage for the event so booking the Food vendors, also, um, you know, just uh, working with the bar staff. That's a heavy that role for a volunteer. Yeah. It was somebody who was an event professional, too. Sure. So um, we're like, so that was a bonus. Right. Yeah. Like, let's <laughs> just do this in what our free time. Doing, right? Yeah. Um, so that was great. Um, but they just, you know, Basilica just had a lot of loyal volunteers, but it's really incentivizing volunteers in the right way. So, like, for Aquatennial, um, we use a lot of volunteers, not nearly as many as Basilica, but um, we use a lot of volunteers. And their incentive is they can come to the fireworks and be in our volunteer viewing area, which is like the best view of the fireworks. Cool. 
people cry over those fireworks i don't know if you, i mean they're like crazy fireworks like i've not when i first started i was like oh no they're so amazing those are fireworks yeah you know? they're amazing that's cool. yeah they're really lovely i mean they're just they're everything about them so yeah i'm that, not surprised. that's the aquatennial one you said mm-hmm. yeah 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 that's pretty amazing um yeah. i had a random question yeah and i don't even know where it came from but uh um, like <laughs> band riders Oh, yeah. I had the same thing I wrote so, down. I was like, tell us your Because, you, you know, you hear the story request. of, like, Led Zeppelin or maybe it was Metallica or something. Mm-hmm. They put in their band rider, like, we can only have blue M&Ms or mm-hmm. whatever. And, like, what's the craziest, I guess, band rider that you've seen with? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, basically the contract and the rider and everything. I mean, scary as it was, you both kind of just, like, it was like, okay, we're going to s- I'm going to cross off all your stuff. You're going to cross off all my stuff. We're going to sign it. And then our production manager who, you know, had been in the industry for a long time, knew everybody, would do all the advancing on it and figuring out what do they really need. So, you know, writers are <laughs> writers are built so that they can walk into any venue and say, well, you did not fulfill this for me. So, like, you know, think about if you're a band, you walk into, like, some, you know, shitty club and, like, mm-hmm. you know, there's the green room is, like, a bathroom and you're like, nah. That's um, not, you know, what we're You didn't to. meet our standards. Yeah. Right. So or it's like not they're... safe or something, yeah. which that makes sense. I mean, actually, I never knew that, but that's really interesting. I had read somewhere or heard somewhere that like whoever it was that had like the blue M&Ms that they they put it on there so that they knew if they, they read, read it. it. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. exactly right. And I had an artist who did that and they wanted a um, photo in their green room of um, Bridget Bardo. <laughs> <laughs> And I know it was in there so that they yeah. would find out if we read it. But yeah. I did it. Right. I was like, well, that's easy. That's like, hilarious. Print that yes. off and put it in Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, so that was an easy one. I will say there was an artist uh, who actually had requested like a hazmat suit and bleach. Oh. That was a weird one. Interesting. That okay. was a weird okay. one. And bleach or in bleach? Or and bleach. And bleach. Like both of those items. Yeah. Was that during uh, the whole, um, what's that one show? Like, uh, breaking Bad phase. <laughs> Were they making? Where, when it was, was it <laughs> popular really at the time? That's a really great question. I now I have to think about that. That's a really a good point. It. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's really a interesting. Great point. Uh, um, I don't think so. I think the person was just weird. They're just weird. They're just, yeah. just like they're. Uh, I think they had a, yeah, whatever, like, they they they, a germ thing. Yeah. 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 So they like so, I mean, you suit know, up and then disinfect everything. We tried yeah. to fulfill that. I think in the end it didn't need to happen, but it was yeah. in there. Wow. So we looked into well, it. Yeah. Um, and and, you, and you can get them at the Home Depot. So <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the, I mean, maybe you can get a sponsorship out of that from right. Home, Home Depot. Depot. Yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> That was a weird one. That was a really weird one, too. Um, yeah. And then one time, um, Woody Harrelson, you know, remember when Woody yeah. Harrelson was running around town yeah. for that one summer? Yeah. He, he came to Basilica. Movie, right? Yeah. Yep. He came to him and Laura Dern. Yep. Came to Basilica. We had to do a whole like backstage thing for them. And it was kind of spontaneous. Mm-hmm. And they were there to see Jenny Lewis. That was an interesting backstage experience. I bet. <laughs> I bet. I can't talk about that one, yeah. but it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's funny ones where it's like, I don't want to name names. We had, uh, I had an artist one time who requested like all these expensive bottles of booze. Can't even remember what they were, but like very expensive, 400 mm. $500, whatever it was. This is during Super Bowl, I'll say that. Oh. Um, so, you know. There you go. Yeah, it is what it is. And they showed up so late and almost weren't able to perform because we almost had to close before they like they were supposed to go on. And I was like, you got 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care. I'm closing the bars. Like, that's what our contract says. Like, and I'm not in the mood anymore. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I was like, I'm not in the mood. So, no. <laughs> and um they literally brought in like some grocery bags or they may have asked us for bags or something and they just had some grocery bags and they put all these bottles of booze in and just walked out when they were done and i was like i mean they're paying for it so whatever like the promoter is but 
I was like, okay, bye. That that is a thing. Like yeah. a lot of times, the stuff goes actually to the bus and to the production mm-hmm. team and not to the artist. Yeah, yeah. So take they'll clean it out. We like they oh, don't yeah. leave stuff behind. Nothing that goes behind. on the bus. They uh-huh. want to take care of their guys. And, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, which get is fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, they should. Those those people work hard. So yeah, yeah, that's legit. I mean, if that's that's an easy way, an easy win there. So yeah, that's smart. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the production sides. An undertaking like that's humongous and so uh, going back to uh the block party so that's typically like a three stage mm-hmm. so it's really like three events built into one and it's like rotating all the time yeah. how is that even like how is that managed yeah so we had a production manager um our production manager is amazing um he worked for prince on the purple rain tour oh sweet um production manager um for that so really i mean highly skilled like yeah they know what's like up. <laughs> amazing yeah um he's an amazing person and and fantastic at what he does and just very like you would never guess um but very well respected um in the industry in the event in the music industry and so um that that was really helpful um but he i mean he did all the advancing and you know the hiring of the um vendors and things like that so um, I was fortunate on Basilica to have a really good team of yeah. people, and I am now too. It's all about a team, really. Right. So, very lucky where I was at Basilica and where I am now that we have such a great team. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. is the production team also a team of volunteers, or? No, um, we had some paid consultants on Basilica. They were sponsorship, um, operations, and production. Um, but but we had like our accounting person was a um, volunteer who did all the accounting stuff. Um, food and beverage was a volunteer. Um, so yeah, we was just really lucky that they had um, the forethought to think about like we can't leave these types of things to just anybody. Just any old person. We don't yeah, know what we're doing. Sense. You got to know what you don't know. This is what I say in events all the time. Know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not a caterer. Yeah. You know I work with people I trust and respect. And then in return, I get good advice. I get good options. I, you know, get best, the best service, the best services that um, that I can get because you got to pick your you got to pick your people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that that's like when you get to that event producer sort of level. It's like, are you producing an event? Or are you just like collecting people to, yeah. to do it for you yeah. in a way because i mean it's like finding the right people and finding the right combination and all the experts and like the people that you know you work well with and that you have a history with and all that it's super important yeah yeah and i would say at basilica we had a lot more of that um at downtown council like we do a lot of that stuff ourselves sure. so um a lot of the um like our annual meeting stuff you know um we do the script we, we do the run a show you know, I'm checking camera angles and, you know, all of the things. So, nice. um, so a little more hands on than when I was at Basilica. Basilica, I mean, managing a committee of 70 people, recruiting a committee of 70 people, managing the consultants, managing the lineup. I mean, that was kind of my role yeah, that's there. Um, and I did other events at Basilica besides Block Party, but I was definitely the largest event that I did there. That's cool. That's really awesome. Do you remember, um, maybe not at the Basilica, but like what was the first thing you've ever done like in the event world? Do you remember like your first event ever? Yeah, I sort of (laughs) remember it this way. I don't know. I mean, this, I don't know if it's, this is what I remember. I remember we had, um, before I was at Basilica, I was at another nonprofit and that nonprofit had a board of directors of 30 people. And so and I had an executive director who um, really handed the calendar over to me. And so I was responsible for everything, dentist appointments, like everything. <laughs> because we had a, a campus up, up in Bemidji, and so they had to fly back and forth often to there because okay. we had a plane at the time because Bemidji's far. Yeah. Um, and if you have another site up there to drive that is i mean they drove a lot but at the time we had a plane right um at that nonprofit, and so just managing the schedule but also those board meetings were every single month for 30 people and i was young and i didn't know right. what i was doing at the time so like those 30 person board meetings because 
I don't know if you know anything about nonprofits and their board members and donors, but they have high expectations. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so trying to meet those expectations was super important um, to the organization, to the funding, to, you know, if they didn't have a good experience at a board meeting, why, you know, why would they want right. to support? Um, and I'm a firm believer that, you know, when somebody arrives, your registration is like the most important piece of your event because you can't win them back if the registration doesn't go well. So, you know, that, makes a lot that of first sense. point of contact when they came yeah. to the meeting, if they didn't have all the documents, if they did not have the details and where to go and when to be there, and you know, that um, I think is is super important. So, I feel like people on boards at times, especially for like a nonprofit or something, can also be like sort of high touch individuals or like maximum signage kind of groups like <laughs> yes absolutely like they're incredibly intelligent but maybe they've gotten a little bit accustomed to other people managing certain details of their life and so um they might need more hand holding than you would expect at times and yeah we used to do some board meetings um for like the u of m physicians or fairview and stuff like that when i was at the u and some days I was like, how did you put on your pants this morning? <laughs> but yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, they're, you know, when you build your career and, you know, become successful, which a lot of these people are like, you're, I mean, not to minimize other people's busy, but you, you know, you, you have to have your life arranged a certain way in order to manage all of that. And mm-hmm. You know, um, you've earned your success, and I think you've earned a little bit of that. Oh, you for know, sure, extra handholding. I mean, I just dream of the day that at least I hope someday. I know. I, I get was that. like, I dream of the day that I, I'm like, my dream is that someday I will not have to answer any of my emails unless I want to answer them. <laughs> That's, Absolutely, ooh, I'm trying to manifest that so hard 100%. right now. Percent. Yeah, <laughs> I hear that, and I'm not sure. really sure how I get my pants on most days, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a judgment, right? That's so funny. Totally. Yeah. Um, what's like your most slash least favorite aspect of events? <laughs> Double edged sword. <sighs> least favorite part of the event. Um, I would say, um, you love it all. I d- I do kind of love that's it cool, all. That's cool. That's cool. Um. I don't know. That is a really good question. I don't know if I can let my brain go there because. <laughs> okay, we can talk after the show. Yeah, yeah. No, is... I mean, registration. I don't love reg. I know yeah. I just talked about how super important it is. Um, you know, a, a lot of my job is really um, event strategy, um, idea generating. What does it look like? You know, that sort of thing. And so, I'm super fortunate to have a really good team of very detailed people. And so, um, you know they tracking those people and the spreadsheets and the name tags and all of that um you know I used to do a lot more of that and that used to be like my world but um as I've been kind of doing this for a long time I'm really old now so I don't have to do as much of that anymore (laughs) although I still do it from time to time but I don't love that yeah I don't love tracking people that's coming in from registering through the right place or so-and-so told so-and-so they're going to be there and here's their table, but they don't have all 10 guests. And so I don't love that. Mm-hmm. Now that I think more about that. <laughs> You're like, wait, I actually do have <laughs> some input on this. Yes. There it is. There yeah. it is. So yeah. least favorite. What, That's how, about, how about like a most favorite? The most favorite when they're over. Um, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the worst? Yeah, that's the worst. I realized that like a couple of years ago that I was like, why the, this is the terrible thing is that like the best moment of event is when it's over. And then I'm like, oh, it's over. But it I'm, doesn't have to be a bad thing though. It's because not, but it's, it's like, it's, it's relief, like seeing it's, it through yeah. and then it's a success Yeah, and you'd completed the task at hand. I know. So that's like, I can see where that, that would be maybe, you know, yeah. be the most satisfying it's more yeah. of an uh, uh, accomplishment, not like yeah. I'm happy that it's over. Is I'm yeah, happy it, that I, I mean, accomplished it, the maybe event. A totally. Sword with that too. It's kind of both. It's like you're yeah. happy that it's over, but because it was successful. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It makes me sad because I'm like I think I I've lost a little bit of my ability to to feel immersed in the event as mm-hmm. much as I used to. Even when I'm not actually working it, when I'm just attending it, I still I've, I'm I have to kind of like think harder about being immersed in it and like mm-hmm. be more mindful of that which it's just being more mindful of it and like 
you know, not always feeling like I'm at work when I'm at events and stuff like that. So, yeah, I do love like at Basilica, we used to go to the top of the Minneapolis College parking ramp Mm -hmm. because the gates were right there. And so we loved we'd race up there just just before the gates opened, if we could, you know, if there wasn't some last minute thing. But a lot of years we were able to do it. So we would bring like, you know, a couple of us up there. We'd take the golf cart up there and we'd sit on the top and we'd watch them open the gates and we'd watch people run to the main stage. So that that. was always really fun. And then standing on the stage, looking at the crowd when their favorite artist is performing or whatever. Like, I love that. Um, when the fireworks are happening and you're watching people like literally like crying, like that's crazy to watch yeah. too, right? And that makes you just feel so happy because I love like, you know, being able to produce events that make a difference with the community, right? Mm-hmm. And being able to bring something free and accessible to yeah. people yeah. and putting a smile on their face, you yeah. know? It's so, like during our downtown Thursdays, we did like free donuts. So just handing people a free donut. Mm-hmm. Or like we had a giant slide and we had like a lot of people that like adults that wanted to just do it right over their lunch hour. They just wanted to go on this giant slide and do that. And still want to. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And they're like, who thought I'd get to go down a giant slide today at lunchtime? Right. So those moments are pretty special, too, I will say. That's great. So I have a a question, actually. Um, So you've been talking about uh, different things that you liked and disliked about events that you've put on, that you've attended. Uh, What are some of the mistakes that you've seen from events that you've put on or attended that you now implement in current and future events that you are a part of? Yeah. So one of the things... Going back to the registration and stuff (laughs) is, um, you know, we always try to make sure that we have even if a board member hasn't RSVP'd, we have a name tag for them. Oh, smart. Even if a city council person hasn't RSVP'd, we have a city council person's name tag for them um, in our stash. So those are some small things. Um, I think that um, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes around food and beverage at their events. Um, You know, not having enough options for people. so I, you know, try to correct those types of things. Not having a safety plan is also mm-hmm. um, a thing. Have you been going more towards like vegetarian, vegan options? Because I know that's a big thing nowadays. Like people are leaning a little bit farther away from mm-hmm. meat. Meat's still a thing. But yeah, there's still I a lot eat of people. All the meat. <laughs> <laughs> it, like we're saving meat. the meat for Esteban and only yeah. Esteban. But yeah. well, I'm a vegetarian, so I've been conscious of this for a long time. <laughs> Sitting across the table from it's a okay. carnivore my, over my here. I'm gluten free, <laughs> so we are a troubling table yeah, right we here. Are a troubling <laughs> table. Let me tell you about this T-bone I had last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, vegetarian, vegan, nice. gluten free. We all have to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. If you're not doing that yeah. in your events right now you are way 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 behind the trend um that non-alcoholic options as well for people um and making that a nice experience and not just water right and not just like you can have a soda or a water and that's it we actually i just brought in some of the seed lip today because i was like oh it's nice to have a nice non-alcoholic option for people and it's definitely I don't drink a ton and a lot of times that when I'm working like it's an event where I'm networking or I'm at a work thing I don't drink at all and like having there was a a long time where I would go to the bar and ask for a coke in a glass like this with limes because then people wouldn't ask me why I wasn't drinking yeah because I didn't I just got annoyed with the conversation after a while it's like yeah just not I don't know you know so you gotta you gotta be conscious of all of those things these days for Mm -hmm. sure uh super important um yeah i don't know i'm a, i'm trying to think of things i mean you know the name tag thing is something i learned um the um checking the camera angles i think that's something i learned too through the annual meeting <laughs> you you all probably know this very well right but um you know there were a couple instances you know where they like had cut off heads and I was like every year now I have to go that was like when I first started Mm -hmm. doing like a lot of um events with I Meg Adam and so I like really like diligent about that now um making sure that those are on point this episode is sponsored by IMAV an innovative and leading audiovisual company based in the Twin Cities if you're looking to elevate your next event All you have to do is reach out to the team at IMAV. 
They'll put together a package that not only fits your budget, but takes your event to the next level. IMAV strives to not only be a resource, but an asset to the success of your event. Whether you need video, audio, or lighting, the professionals at IMAV can execute and run your meeting or event flawlessly. Their team is a dream to work with and always deliver a final product that leaves guests blown away. Find them online at imav.pro. Use promo code EVENTLIFE when you contact them to receive 30% off all equipment rentals for your first event. Again, go to imav.pro to lock in the best audio visual vendor for your next event. Do you have like a favorite, like a, a simple little tip that like another event person has given you that you still use like all the time? I mean, I think the name tags one is a really good one actually that I might have to remember in the back of my head. Yeah, I have um, kind of a mantra that I always talk about. It's uh, fix it, fake it, forget it. And I was told that by an auctioneer one time. Okay. Um, and I, I think that's just super important because um, things happen. You know, humans are involved. And, you know, at least we're not perfect yet. I mean, AI hasn't fixed us yet. So <laughs> we'll still have weird hands. Yeah. Though, so. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, you know, mistakes are going to happen. And I think it's how you react to those mistakes. And so, um, you know, uh, somebody on your team makes a mistake. Let's note it. Mm-hmm. We can talk about it after the event, but it's it does no good. Like I had, so during covid we had um we did an annual meeting and it was super ambitious because we decided we were gonna and this was before vaccines we were gonna have all of our speakers in person and our annual meeting has approximately 12 to 15 different presenters at it and we decided to do this really ambitious thing and we had the armory which was great because there's plenty of space at the armory right. we, we didn't bring any guests any attendees in it was just the speakers and we were going to live stream it and I had made sure that we had a redundant internet connection um, for if the first one did not fail. And I'm not super technical, so I could be saying this yeah. the wrong way, but I, it was really important <laughs> to me to have a redundant internet connection because then we could lean on that if, yep. you know. And, um, and lo and behold, it happened. Mm-hmm. And there were some people and they were like, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? And I'm like, okay, if I go over there and I interrupt this person, it is not going to help anything. They know it's a problem. They're working on fixing it. Right. If I go over there, I'm just going to delay the fix, right? And it's the same thing with the person who calls our show at our annual meeting. You know, once I've planned this event and given the script and the cues and everything to them, it's in their hands. Mm -hmm. And if something happens, that person is working on fixing it. If I go on over there and interrupt it, we n- miss the next five cues, yeah. right? Because the show has to keep going, mm-hmm. right. you know? And so I, I had to teach myself that a little bit because I am the person who's like, I'm responsible for this. Like, I need to go over and fix it. And in reality, you're not going to, you're going to make it worse. Right. I mean, it depends on the situation, obviously, mm-hmm. if you do know something more than this person. But that person calling the show has the trust of all of those people in that back room, right? Yeah. The the person running the teleprompter, the sound, the person running the switcher, like that person calling the show, they have it. Right. You know, that's why you hire somebody who knows what they're doing. And we fly somebody, he's always at Super Bowl and we fly him here because he's the best and we just rely on him to do it. And um, so I can't go over and get involved in that because I stand there and I'm watching and I'm on a headset and I'm making sure that it's, you know, seen being fixed. But the best thing I can do is, is step back and let them fix it because yeah. they're also connected and the show is still happening. Yeah. So that is something I learned and I would pass along to other people too. I think the reaction is to go towards it, freak out, what's going on? And then in reality, are they on it? Okay, they're on it. I stay and make sure they're on it. Mm -hmm. But me getting involved is not going to help. Yeah, throwing another person in the mix can actually just complicate it. Um, So the fix it, fake it, forget it. So we just talked about kind of fixing it. Where's like the fake it and then the, how is that? Because you have a team of people. And if you're pissed off, and you're showing like really strong emotions. Gotcha. Like it impacts everybody else on your team. Oh, yeah. And if you're a good leader, we're gonna address it. Yep. 
but this is not the time so it's when like the guests are here attitude yeah, and like tone. your persona and like don't let people know that shit's going awry like yep you just we're we're doing everything we can and we're smiling and happy yep, yep, yep. cool well and half the time people sometimes they don't even know it's happening because you know you have the script you know how it's supposed to go but it doesn't necessarily mean that anyone else has any idea what was supposed to be happening exactly yeah yeah so i see some smiles coming out of there (laughs) what do we got guys i mean in theater that happens a lot everybody's like oh my god that was such a great show and then the tech team and the actors are like this is the worst show we ever did what the heck happened (laughs) at 38 minutes like where'd the where'd the wall go yeah (laughs) nobody knows no one knows right Yeah. yeah yeah and you don't know those moments so you know you just and i like to be there for my team i don't mm-hmm. think it does you any good to like berate your team Mm-mm. in the midst of anything right that doesn't help it's like let's all learn from it you like, learn from yeah. this i like to mentor be a mentor to the team you know too and and try to be a leader for them and you know support each other i have i've been fortunate to have leaders um that have done that for me where they say okay i own up to a mistake and they say okay why did it happen what happened okay i will support you Mm -hmm. you know let's move on but um we've addressed it i've owned it it won't happen again it might happen again but i'm going to do everything i can that it won't so yeah it sucks when people don't take like ownership about things that yeah was probably their thing and they should own up to it and sometimes you got to own up to it even if it wasn't your thing yeah yeah like, sure. Especially if you're in that leadership position, it's just a reality of it's like when you get to a certain position, it's a royal we all the time, right? Like we, yep, we <laughs> dropped the ball. Yep, we did that. Yeah, it's like you gotta. You don't want to be include you, yourself on it. it yeah, was your team or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can't point your finger at somebody at someone below you. That's just like a really bad look, first of all. But it also is terrible for team morale. It's like yeah, all it's the things. It's honestly a waste of time too because right. you're too busy like being like I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and then they're trying to figure out how, where the problem lied. Right. Instead of just being like, yeah, I did it. And it's like, okay, perfect. Now we're at solution rather yeah. than problem. Right. I, I mean, I think there's some fragility in there mm-hmm. about like people and not being able to handle owning up to a mistake and just, you know, living with the fact that, hey, something happened under their watch or whatever. They want to cast blame so that they maybe sleep better at night or whatever. Right. You it know, feels it's like, like job security or something. And yeah, it's like the, um, you know, it's like a relationship thing mantra. Like it's you and me against the problem, not you and me against each other kind of thing. And I think that faster you can move to us against the problem and not us against each other, like the more effective it's going to be in the long run. Um, yeah. yeah, super important. And you, you know, I like to, I like to build a team and keep them. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> that's not how you keep a team by no. berating them and making them feel like they you know messed up all the time right um but helping them grow grow and learn you know yeah. all boats rise right yep absolutely exactly. and like you can keep them for a while and then eventually they leave to go do bigger and better things because you've taught them so well yeah. which sucks sometimes <laughs> but it's it great sucks but you also yeah it's like the whole point of it right and that, i mean i think the lovely thing about the event industry too is that like a lot of times those people are going to come back in a different way, whether it's like you've left and gone to a p- different position. You see them in the midst of like an association, which is be a good yep. chance to talk yeah. about this MNFEA, yep. um, all those kind of things. And I can say that when I worked with you, like on um, the International Live Events Association, ILEA board, you were always an amazing mentor and like always there for people and have a very calm energy Aww. all the time which is very appreciated <laughs> you've been through the chaos <laughs> so now you're some, calm you know, yeah. some hijinks with you as well so it's not always yes. the calm yes, yes. Like, <laughs> yeah no i i mean i've i mean i've i feel like i handle stress pretty well mm-hmm. i've been through some pretty stressful i mean in, in the end we're not performing surgery right. like let's be honest like your risk management i mean that is pretty critical right. that you Keep have that safe. piece dialed in i mean mm-hmm. You know, at the end of a silica, I was like checking rooftops, you know, looking yeah. for, you know, we had to make sure we had every contact for every building around there because yeah. we had a situation. <laughs> this is sorry. And this is going to go off topic. And then oh. we that we should get to the association yeah, stuff. Yeah. But this um, is good. we had a, a situation at Basilica where um, somebody, a security alerted and was like, there's somebody in the bell tower. Does anybody know who's in the bell tower? Like Ooh, there's a person in the bell tower. <laughs> like. 
So, and nobody was like, I'm in the, you know, I took somebody up there because you yeah. could go up there and it was yeah. a great view. And sometimes people would take, they like bef- the morning of Basilica, Saturday morning, the second day, they would always go up to the dome, a group of people. I never went because it sounded terrifying yeah, to me. Yeah, I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> but the bell tower, so there, there was somebody in the bell tower and of course everybody like got, you know, their stuff ready to go got security we're about to go up to the bell tower and all of a sudden comes down one of the one of the priests and a couple of their buddy oh. <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, and i was like oh sorry didn't tell anybody that yeah. you know we were up there whatever so um anyway that's just a, a funny story but um <laughs> i'm like what were they doing yeah, no, i'm just kidding yeah. i'm not well, even gonna know, go we're not got stop we're stop it. Stop it. yeah stop no it. Um, stop it was i know not i'm totally that. kidding i'm totally <laughs> kidding i'm totally kidding right, this was like we, yeah oh, yeah <laughs> so <laughs> somebody back in holy oh, trinity is magic no, right now <laughs> yeah don't be a oh my god moving on moving on yeah no so before we move on to the next thing um the last point was forget Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, And I guess that's part of the um, fix it, fake it, forget it. Um, Part of the forget it piece, I guess, you know, forget it maybe isn't the most important word in those three, but forget it is in this, you know, it it goes back to the um, fake it piece, right? So in the moment, we, you know, the day of, you know, things are heated. In the end, after an event's all over, it was an incredible feat that a lot yeah. of people put a lot of extra time and worry into, right? Like the yeah. person doing the name tags is up all night wondering if they have everybody's name, which seems silly, but they do. That happens. Right. And so mm-hmm. people put um, a lot of extra effort into events. And so, you know, we have to, you, the, you have to say it was successful, even if there were a lot of problems. There's still success in, yeah. a, in an event that doesn't come off perfectly and has a lot of problems there's still success there mm-hmm. right 100%, yeah so you have to celebrate that success and forget about it as in like it's just like doesn't do any good to s- yeah you stir can't on eat it. you up yeah. inside yeah. for no. you know the next you gotta month move on to the next thing and yeah. you got other stuff to worry about and yeah. being successful for the next thing but yeah. all right cool we capped that <laughs> 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 Yes. No, I just, around, I, I just like <laughs> I like the fix it, fake it, forget it. But I just wanted to like hear a little bit about yeah. your thoughts about each of those segments. So yeah. that was awesome. Glad we finished that out. <laughs> um, so MNFEA, we touched on a little bit, which yeah. you are a board member yep. of. Correct, Can we currently. explain what that is? Yes, too? please yeah. tell us what that is. So the Minnesota Festivals and Events Association has been around for gosh, probably close to maybe. 25 30 years now oh, wow. yeah okay. a long time surprisingly um but it's a great organization it is a really kind of bare bones like festival people tried and true porta potties generators trash logistics um and it is um an organization that does um educational monthly educational events um it does networking events um it uh hosts an annual conference which is coming up on march 21st and 22nd um that conference travels all over the state but this year it's actually in st louis park so it's very local um, which is exciting for different reasons um and that organization there's also some advocacy that has been done through that organization so much like um the live events coalition mm-hmm. which we were oh, yeah. both a part of yep um they also got involved in how to reopen festivals um, during COVID and wrote, you know, a whole proposal to yeah. the Department of Health as well. Um, there's also been some advocacy work that's been done on just making events a little more, a little easier to do in the city of Minneapolis as well. So there's a little bit of advocacy there. Um, I see us maybe leaning into that more into the future as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the conference is coming up, and it's a fantastic conference. It is um, covers a lot of areas. Um, we're going to talk about um, uh, cannabis and events. We've done a couple of sessions on that already. Um, we are going to have a session on the climate change one that I just mentioned um, and how it impacts weather patterns and events. Um, we are going to have a risk management plan um, with a gentleman who does the risk management for Target Field. Um, is going to present on that. 
Um, we have how to do more inclusive events using AI, which will be interesting mm, to hear that about. That is interesting. Interesting, yeah. Um, so that one is ha- that's happening. Um, you know, creating um, uh, great experiences yeah. th- for festivals. Um, that's going to be one of the topics. So there's a lot of great topics, yeah. um, and it's going to be a really exciting conference. So. You're doing a Dine in the Dark luncheon, too. I just saw that today, which is exciting. So I am attending the conference. Um, I think that we've gone the last few years um, when it has been happening, uh, and I really enjoy it because it's a, such a different perspective on on. It's like we're doing the same thing, but in an entirely different way. And like, I really I love the way that the people in MNFEA describe themselves or talk about themselves because they're just all very like down to earth. There's like no no airs there there's just no <laughs> they're all like we're just like basically a bunch of carnies right yeah. like that's the word that gets used a lot so i'm not calling them that, that no is no that's a hundred that's a hundred percent true yeah there is it's like very humble in a lot of ways and really funny and they have a good time and castine and i spoke at it um last year mm-hmm. yeah last year yeah. yeah last year and we did we had like the early morning slot after the <laughs> night that everybody parties. And I was like, there's a lot of dead eyes in the room right now. People that are a little hungover, they like to have fun. So That's it was awesome. a great presentation. Thank you. No, I think people enjoyed it. We just were like, are you enjoying it? <laughs> I think you're enjoying it, but I can't tell for sure. So, well, I think for me, because I'm also a member of ILEA, yeah. right? And I've been a member of ILEA for a really long time, was a board president, co chaired the international. Um, when Ilea Live was when here. When Ilea Live yeah, was here, Christy Altendorf, Altendorf and I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I love that organization as well. And mm-hmm. what's different is I like to bring, like bringing you and Castina to do a session mm-hmm. because I think what happens with some of these festivals is um, they're so concerned with logistics because they're outside, they're building venues from the ground up. I mean, there's no power in yeah. most of them. You know, there's no shade, there's no cover. So they're building venues from the ground up. So really focused on power and porta potties and um, those types of things. And bringing ILEA to it is trying to make them think a little bit more about creating great experience for the guests. They think about lines and those kind of things. But what else can we do Mm -hmm. to really make these immersive experiences for people um, that is beyond, you know, the bathroom lines were short. Right. So trying to bring that in just in recent years, I think we've really been trying to bring that piece in a little bit more. Yeah, the word immersive has been... I, I, you never used to hear it. At least I feel like I never did. Yeah. Um, but in the last few years, I feel like that's become a thing. Do you have any like thoughts on that? Yeah, I. So last year was like a huge year for me traveling. I go to a ton of concerts. I go to music festivals. I go to concerts. I go to immersive experiences whenever I can. And I learn something from it. I take away from it every time I go. Um, yes. But I love to go to music festivals. Um, last year I went to, I don't know how many I went to, but I travel for music a lot. That's cool. Um, and for pleasure, not always. For pleasure. Yeah. But, you know, I'm also always right. like, taking it in as well. Um, but so like, you know, Red Rocks, went to a music festival in St. Louis. Um, Hinterland Festival in Des Moines, Iowa is a great festival that that has just keeps growing every single year, which is a great one. Um, uh so yeah i mean just all the concerts around here we're so fortunate yeah. to have such a great music scene here and mm-hmm. um you know meow wolf is something that i went to that i really loved going to see meow that's, wolf that's a fun one yeah I'm re- i really super- want to go there that army because there's denver and there's las denver, vegas santa fe okay um they just opened up one and i think it's like dallas okay um and there's maybe one more um i thought there was one in the midwest there's, I think, one planned for the Midwest, but they haven't really announced Chicago? the location. Probably, Probably. I would guess Chicago. Yeah. Um, but they're really cool because you go inside and we were like, okay, what the hell just happened? Like, mm-hmm. y- you go in and you don't at first notice the exit signs. So you're inside of this and you're just like, okay, I don't. I don't know how to get out of here. And then <laughs> you're terrified. And then you start to see, like, they still have to have the exit sign, right? right. Um, but there's just something that it does to you to really kind of lose that, like, lose control a little bit when you're yeah. in there and just be like. 
I think and you that's have to why, start to discover, right? right? I think that's why I really want to go to it because I'm like, like I was saying earlier that I sometimes feel like I've lost the ability to lose myself or be immersed in events. And I feel like that would be a, a really interesting experience. Yeah. yeah. I'm really into like the projection mapping too. So like oh, when the Van that. Gogh thing was here, mm-hmm. um, you know, that was super cool. I went to the Disney one as well that they had here. Yeah. Um, I'm super into like that. That is just i think really fun you should go if you i want to go the sphere oh yeah yeah. i'm dying to go to the sphere i know a lot of people have gone and i'm just dying because i also am obsessed with led screens yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. obsession around led screens yeah (laughs) call back to the omar and grant podcast Yeah. Yeah. yeah Yeah, I went to, uh, so in Paris, there's a there's a exhibit called the Atelier des Lumières. Lumières? I can't remember exactly. Fancy. I know. Yeah, very. <laughs> but it's it's projection mapping, but like incredible. And then they had like a projection mapping room also like combined with like an infinity style mirror thing. Oh, wow. And it was, it's like, there's a lot of art to see obviously in Paris, but it's one of my favorite things there because it's a little different every single time you go. And I've been a few times and it's just it's very immersive. Like it's one of the few places where I feel like lost in it. So I think yeah. you'd love that a lot. Yeah, you should go to uh, to Meow Wolf. Meow Wolf. It's been on my list for a while, for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of cool ones out there and I haven't been to very many at all, but yeah. just I'm very just drawn to those experiences yeah. because mm-hmm. I think you do, you know, that 360 degree yeah. immersive experience. So we just yeah. did at our annual meeting, right? We had a band open. Anybody can do a band. Then I was like, I want this like to like, like I want our attend. And this is an annual meeting over a lunch hour, and they're yeah. expecting one thing, and we try to make them feel like they left a rock concert or like nice. a concert at the yeah. Armory. Yeah, it's I've been once, and it was amazing. And I was like, I didn't. What is happening right now? <laughs> like I don't even know how I ended up there, but it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. So we are the lighting there is obviously bananas in there. It's like amazing lighting, and the rigging is amazing and so you know for the set so we had the band open and then we called the band came back out Mm -hmm. and then we dropped aerial aerialists from all the way around the hole all the guests because they were all down in the bowl and the aerialists up there so just that unexpected thing and like they were just surrounded by it like Mm -hmm. so there's no bad seat i like to create events where there's no bad seats in the room um and so you know, like we have LED screens all over and then in the center. And I mean, so we really try to make sure that people feel like they were all a part of the event and not just the people in the front. Yeah, it's funny. The the sphere, going back to the sphere, yeah. it makes so much sense. Like we, we can never get enough, mm-hmm. like as a, humans, you know, <laughs> like a phone isn't enough or going to see a 3D in, in person, like, um, you know, a concert. Like yeah. you too, I know, did the sphere not that long ago. Yeah. Um, I think they're it makes, consistently doing uh, they have, they have the sphere. Residency. They're like the resident. Yeah. Oh, band really? Right now. That's yeah. crazy. I suppose it's Vegas. You I have think like a Fish residency. is going to do a residency there. Oh, too. Oh. Oh. Jam band. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to break up my tie dye shirt. <laughs> um, nice. But what I'm saying is, like, it makes so much sense, like, the trajectory of people needing to immerse themselves more in in like just that kind of environment yeah. so like like a regular venue isn't cool as as much anymore they're still cool there's a lot of them cool but like say, but now you <laughs> no, you know what i mean though but like, yeah, now, like Excuse me. now go to the sphere and then go to like a, a normal venue no, i know and yeah, it's no, just it's like you know what i mean like yeah. where, and where does it go from there that's yeah. the that's the other thing that blows my mind is like you know you go to go to a 3d like and i was talking about this last time on the omar podcast um where you're driving up to the venue and you can see it from a mile a couple miles away so you're like Sphere. experiencing it mm-hmm. yeah and you and they have the led screens on the outside so you are like that's what i'm yeah, saying it's like, like a whole different and and it's cool because mm-hmm. like other people are experiencing it but they're not at the show mm-hmm. they yeah. maybe don't go but they're gonna see like you can get a somewhat of a experience without buying tickets because mm-hmm. they're gonna you know they're gonna put signs yeah. on the outside and that is cool in and of itself so it's obviously like a tourist attraction because of that but um it just makes so much sense that us people that can't get enough mm-hmm. you know oh i need more more, more stimulation more, yeah. yeah 
let's do a sphere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it makes so Wrap much sense. me in it. Right? It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, and then you have the opposite of it, which is, I'm sure you guys have seen that Oompa Loompa experience that happened in... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. What? You haven't seen this? Was no. that in London? I think it was in Glasgow. Oh, maybe? okay. Yeah. That means- oh, that was... It was wild. So they did a lot of advertising for it, and it was like all AI-produced art for the advertising. And then it made it look like this in- insane, just wild event. And then people showed up, and it was like... <laughs> Somebody spent fifty dollars at Party City. It was yeah. there was like no chocolate. Yeah. There was no. Yeah. There was like no candy. It was like the Willy, Wonka, was Willy Wonka like experience just for fun or, something. or somebody it, dropped the ball. Somebody. It was like a fire festival situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like over promise and under deliver. Yeah. Yep. And kids were involved. Which oh, oh here we go. So if you were at oh. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we all know oh, yeah, what that we is, go. don't we? Whether you've seen the new Wonka film or the original, you remember that song. And uh, this event promised to have all the magic of that. It promised to be a magical <laughs> chocolate experience at mm. every turn, just like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. But instead, uh, it ended, I'm afraid, with children crying, parents angry, and the police called to the site. <laughs> they called the police. Here's the here reality of oh the immersive oh, that was it? event in Glasgow, where oh, not so golden my. tickets went for 35 pounds. Wow. It went viral this week for all the wrong reasons. This is way worse than the describing they got it as one an bouncy empty warehouse, castle. sparsely decorated with cheap props and a lack of chocolate, which you'd think you want, with kids given a handful of jelly oh, beans. Oh my God. Oh, and don't involve kids. They didn't even give them an everlasting gobstopper? You're right. Oh, gee, think. Don't Jeepers. involve kids either, because... Yeah. Wow. Fire festival's one thing, but when you bring kids into the mix... Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Just imagine, like, throwing an event so bad that somebody calls the police to complain. Oh, like, my that's gosh. Just... Well, it's like the Tommy Wiseau movie. Um... I can't remember the name of it right now. The Room. The Room. Yeah. Yes, thank you. You saved me right there. <laughs> but The Room, and it's it's like a... There's like an underground uh, cult following on this movie, and people like get together still yearly and watch it. It's like really? one of the worst movies ever created. <laughs> oh, I have heard of this. Yes, and, it's and like the it's like the Rocky Horror Picture Show Lisa. kind of thing. Only terrible, not, terrible not, movie. Not only was it really bad and has a cult following, they made a movie about the movie, about the actor and the director and everything, and it stars uh, Jack, the brothers. Yeah. Block, block, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody save him. Really bad. Yeah. I'll look hey, it you got I'll Google look right in front of you. Yeah, you got Google. I'm have, the one who can only save myself. Right. You got the Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. It's tough yeah, to recover from that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so embarrassing. Just watching it, it's like, ooh, oh, every time, every, every camera angle is so painful to look at. It's like... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's like a sex scene a couple times, and I swear they just like reuse the same footage or whatever. Oh my God, funny. <laughs> James, James, James Franco and oh. his brother oh. were. Oh, Franco yeah. It's yeah. called yeah. It's, the movie's called The Disaster Artist, mm. and it like it follows James James Franco's playing the director, and they do the whole movie. It's like a behind the scenes of the movie of him making it. It's actually really. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have, I'll check that out. But yeah, so I don't even know where we were going with that. But uh, I think just yeah, the oh I, the the bad events. The bad events. Oh, you want right. to go viral, but not that. Not viral. for well, that. It, no, it's <laughs> funny because the dude's f- crazy famous because of this movie. And well, I think these people are going to be famous for a very different reason. And like, I mean, like, yeah, Fire no, Festival 100%. got its own Netflix two specials. Like, yeah, and a Netflix. They so I guess they still, yeah. have, they still have movies coming out with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So thankfully, and is he doing it again? I think so. Yeah, I think he's trying. Yeah, but well, we've all been to a bad event. I mean, right. let's be honest. But thankfully, none of yours. So <laughs> I try. <laughs> I'm a terrible guest. I stopped. I actually, um, when I got married, yeah, I stopped doing that at weddings because mm. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I never got into that business. Yeah. I know you've been deeply immersed in the wedding. <laughs> business but i <laughs> fortunately have been able <laughs> to avoid weddings in my entire events career besides my own so yeah. i know it's like a huge piece of the industry and sure um but i feel very fortunate to not have gotten in that direction 
on the other side of it. <laughs> There's some pros and cons on both sides for sure, but There's a lot of pretty things that are involved in, in weddings that I don't always get to do a lot of that yeah, stuff, that's you fair. know. That's Flowers fair. and linens like maybe once or twice a year, but Yeah. Um so I kind of miss that about mm. things, but But you get to have 20 aerialists, so like eh, you you do some cool stuff. <laughs> it's, with that. it's a yeah. It's, it's a trade-off. more immersive. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, this so, is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Before we kind of end this, um, I kind of had one kind of final question. It's like mm-hmm. we all have like aspirations, and we're always thinking about that next thing that we mm-hmm. want to do. I know everyone in the room right now has that next thing. So for you, like, what is what aspirations do you have? Like, you have a, a crazy resume already of things that you've done and accomplishments that you've made and you're part of all the organizations already so like where where do you want to go from from here yeah so I used to think I wanted to play in the Grammys that for me was kind of like like the ultimate uh event um which would still be really cool I think yeah um mostly because I love the collaborations they do with artists and they're like one of a kind collaborations that you don't really get a lot of other places, right? The other people who do that well is Coachella. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like those are the types of things that I would love to be involved in. You know, I love bringing those art installations that they do are amazing and incredible. And then the way that they, you know, sort of revive all these large bands, you know, mm-hmm. that aren't even like No Doubt is doing it this year and No mm-hmm. Doubt's not together, you know, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been lots of other bands that they have like brought out from retirement, which I think is pretty amazing when you can do something like that. Um, as a festival producer, people really put a lot of, um, your reputation has got to be great. People yeah. put a lot of faith in you and you can pretty much move mountains because we know rock bands don't get along when they all die out, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They all hate each other. So oh. I think like Guns N' Roses was one that they brought back. Like that nice. was to me was like incredible that they got them all to get along and they're still like touring together, right? Yeah. So I guess if I could just curate my own music festival and I had like the budget to do it, like I would love to do that. Nice. Awesome. So Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having it was me. Awesome this was chatting. super fun. Thanks for inviting me. Fun. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching the podcast. Hit the like and follow button to stay updated on our latest episode. If you have ideas of topics or guests you'd like us to interview, drop us a comment and we'll see you next time.